three, two, one. What is happening, guys? This is Logan Robinson from Here the Spear, presented to you by NoelGameDay.com. We are here live, live on a Wednesday evening, immediately after Florida State just wrapped up their second practice of spring camp. Another hot one, but a beautiful evening and a lot better now. We've got two special guests with us on Here the Spear this week. We've got 2024 commits quarterback Luke Cromanhawk along with wide receiver commit Camden Fryer. Gentlemen, how are we doing? I, as long as I got Luke's name and his last name correct, then we're, we're, we're working. It's a good start. Yes, sir. Nailed it. But yeah, how, how are you guys doing? I appreciate, appreciate both of y'all hopping on here uh, with us. We haven't had a dual pod like this with some recruits, but y'all have a special relationship. So definitely looking forward to it. But how are you guys doing this evening? I'm good, man. I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, me too. Me too. Just appreciate y'all. I want to start off with you, Luke. You just we talked about it in the production meeting before we got started on here, but you had a pretty good run on the basketball side of things. Tell us about that, and almost got close to that championship. Yes, sir. Uh, we had a we had a pretty good season. Um, we had we had a real good point guard and uh, some pretty good big plays. So uh, they took us pretty far and. Uh, we made it to that final four and, you know, we were getting our butts whipped the whole game. And then we, we made a little comeback in the fourth and made it, made it interesting, but uh, we just couldn't get it done in the end. And Camden, you had a pretty interesting weekend too, over down there in Orlando competing at the Under Armour event. It sounded like you had a pretty good day. So just what was that experience like and uh, competing in some of the top talent in the country? Oh, it was fun. It was fun. First off, I have never been that hot in my life. That was, <laughs> that was so hot. Um, but no, it was fun. You know, you got signed in, they gave you the gear. Shoot, I got it right. There's pretty cool gear they gave you. Um, and then, you know, get, get there and start warming up. And they got, you know, our coach that stretches out was hyped up. He was, he was calling the quarterbacks prima donnas. He was pissed off at them. And he was just, you know, yelling, screaming, did our, um, you know, did the 40 vertical broad jump, all of that. And, um, felt pretty good about, what I did, but they, they didn't really tell you what you did. So I was like, dang, I don't, I didn't get to see what I get there, what I ran. But then mm-hmm. the dude who was on the laser for the 40, he walked up to me about 10 minutes later. He said, Hey, I'm not supposed to tell you what you ran, but just know you ran good. So um, that was good. And I still don't, to this day, I don't know what I ran. But um, I had a bam, I had, honestly, I had, um, I had some recruiting coach. They, they, they saw it, but. I guess the player yourself can't see it, but um, then the one on ones went well. Some, some guy, um, some guy, some media guy, he made a compilation of routes on a video, a reel on Instagram, and um, it was pretty cool. It was, it was a good day. It was a good competition. Um, you know, had some good quarterbacks there. I, I wish Luke could have been there, but you know, you know, he had basketball and everything else going on. But um, you know, it went very well. It went very well. Um. It was a good weekend. Yeah. I was going to say for Luke and also Camden, both of you guys, Luke, you're going into lacrosse this spring. Camden, when does – and also Luke, when does spring begin for y'all football-wise at y'all schools? Um, We start, like, really, really, really soon. Like, I think so it's you're like – mix in lacrosse with that? I think so, yes, sir. But it'll be good because we'll go, we'll go like, early in the mornings and stuff. So we'll go out there early in the mornings, and then you know from there I'll go to lacrosse. But uh, yeah, we're real soon. We're we're getting into the swing of it, and uh, man, I'm pumped up. Oh um, shoot! I don't think I'll put a helmet on this spring. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, our baseball team is pretty darn good. We're we're looking to win state, and um, you know our coach he just as long as I'm out there running routes, like I was. Like, like y'all, I was scared I was going to make it here in time because I was running routes at the high school after, after baseball practice. Um, but I may, hope maybe I'll get to play spring ball, but I'm, I'm not sure if I will. Got you. And just sticking uh, with Camden, I'm going to ask you too, Luke. Uh, you know, Camden, it's been over a year now since you did commit to Florida State. Obviously, you've got those ties through your family, your, your dad and uncle being a legacy um, recruit for FSU. So just how's everything gone with your commitment over the past uh, year? And what's it been like kind of falling in those footsteps of your dad and uncle? Well, um, it's been good. It's been a blessing. Um, very thankful. But 
you know, my dad and my uncle went here and they love Florida State, but they they probably my freshman year, they offered me my freshman year, and probably two or three months later, they both sat me down. They said, Cam, we love Florida State, and uh, you know we, you know, like we'd love to see you go there, but this is your decision, and we don't care where you go. We said, now if you, they said, if you go to the Florida Gators, we'll just wear orange or blue. We won't wear orange and blue, but we'll support you. Um, so honestly, I mean, you know, it may, it, it's cool. I mean, I guess it's cool being like a legacy commit and everything, but they, they just want the what's best for me. And um, it, it was, it was a, a year because I got offered December 2020, I think it was. Um, and then January 2021. No, 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 no. I think I got – basically a year later mm-hmm. or over a year later, I finally committed. Mm-hmm. And, um, no, I just wanted to make sure I was the right place for me. And, you know, as of right now, I, I'm still I'm, – I still feel like I'm right. I mean, it's the right place for me. I have been able to build a relationship with Coach Dugans and Coach um, Norvell and all the other coaches there. Um, just a tremendous build of relationship. And um, it just – every day – they just kind of make me feel more sturdy about my decision and just things I see every day. I bet Luke can stand by that every day. He's feeling, you know, you know, more and more excited to, you know, be a part of what they got going on over there. And, um, you know, it's, it's just being come true, honestly, that you just, you know, you, you feel like you're able to be a part of something like that. For sure. And Luke will talk about you as well. Obviously, Florida State was – the first school to offer you a couple of years ago now after a performance at a summer camp. And ever since then, you know, a bunch of other schools have been hopping on board as well as you've kind of developed into one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And you made that decision to commit to Florida state last March. So, I mean, you're coming up on a year yourself since being committed to to FSU. How's everything uh, going with that pledge and, you know, what's it meant to see FSU with that investment in you so early? Yeah, I mean it's. I mean it was a dream come true getting that first offer um, over on those those little intramural fields. I mean I've never been more happier in my life. Like just everything that I work for, and you know all, all the things that my parents have put up with, and you know all the people who have been with me on my journey. Just getting that first offer, it was it was amazing. Um, and then just just the way that Florida State has, you know, uh, the past season that they've had, and and just the relationships that. Uh, keep being built uh, stronger and stronger has just made my decision way, way easier. And I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy that I'm, I found, I'm finally found my home and I just, I'm happy to be a Noel. What stood out to you right away, Luke, specifically when speaking with Mike Norvell, what was he telling you? You get that offer and everything. What, what, what kind of told you about Norvell? Like, yeah, this might be the school for me in my future. One of the big things for me was his passion. Like, I mean, he was like straightforward, straight shooting guy. And like, he kept it, kept it 100 with you. And he was just super excited about me. And, you know, that made me feel good. Um, And then he was, he just told me like day one, he said that he's going to bring this program back to where it needs to be. And, you know, he sees me being a part of that. And that was really big for me. And then just the way that, you know, they treated me like family and coach Norvellis treated me like family has just made the decision way easier. And you both have kind of talked about it, but seeing what Florida State did on the field uh, last season, you know, winning 10 games and, you know, hopefully we'll get Camden back in a minute. So just for you now, Luke, uh, Florida State winning 10 games, showing that progress last year. Obviously, when you committed to FSU before the 2022 season, that was before they had really shown that success. But then last year they would make the breakthrough under Mike Norvell. I mean, what did it mean to to see that? Yeah, it was huge. Um, Actually, Coach Norvell, um, on one of my visits before the season started, he called me into the office and we had a conversation, him and my uh, my parents, and he was like, you know, we're going to fix this program around and I'm going to get this place to where it needs to be. Um, and I promise you that that Florida State will be back on the rise and that we're going to make this, make this back like the old days and we're going to get to the top again. And uh, just him keeping that pro- promise was just awesome and unbelievable. And I'm um, I'm so happy for him and and for where this program is heading, and I'm excited for the future. And Camden, same thing for you. I'm not sure if you heard it before you got cut off, but just, you know, you made that decision to commit to Florida State before Mike Norvell and FSU had really shown that success on the field. So for them to win 10 games last year, win that cheese at bowl against Oklahoma, defeat both Florida and Miami, you know, what did that mean to you? I mean, it meant a lot to me. You know, it kind of – 
made me feel like I was standing in the right place, like I made a good decision. Um, but, you know, you know, I've been a fan my whole life, even before the commitment, before mm-hmm. the offer. So, you know, shoot, I just – I like seeing Florida State win. I mean, Coach told me before that season, he goes, you know, I'm not happy with my last season. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm promising you and I'm promising other people that, like kind of like Luke said, we're going to get it back to how it used to be. And then eventually we're going to have it better. And we're going to show you this season. And they had a plan and they executed it. And, you know, just every week, every week, it's just, you know, getting more and more pumped up. And, you know, I'd have teammates and I've had, I'd have classmates to be like, Camden, Florida State, come on. You know, this before the season. And they said, we know your daddy went there, but, you know, and then they'd name other colleges. And I'd be like, yeah, I just said, just wait, just wait. And, you know, now I got football teammates who told me they would never go to Florida State. They're like, dude, hook me up. You know, I want to go to Florida State. So, like, like just stuff, you know, they just – you just stuck with them. And, you know, you're glad that you stuck with them. Luke, I want to talk about Tony Tokars because I think he plays a big, vital role in building relationships with you guys, definitely on the recruiting level of things in high school. What about Tony Tokars? Just tell us a little bit about him, y'all's relationship, and then maybe if he, if a lot of him went into picking Florida State. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the big things that stood out to me about Coach Tarkarts was uh, he's a family man, and like family is like super big for me. Like that's one of the one of the big reasons why FSU checked my boxes. It's not too far from my home, so it's it's an easy trip here and there to come back, and my parents can come to every game. So that was big for me, but. He, he like really showed me that he was a family man. Like, I mean, he'd FaceTime me with his, with his wife, Emily, and they'd be in the kitchen cooking and he'd FaceTime me with his dogs and stuff. And we just talk and like, you know, he's just always checking up, checking up on me, making sure I'm good, always asking about the family. And that was just a huge part for me in uh, building this relationship. It, and it really made me comfortable with him. Um, and to be honest with you, he was a huge reason on why I committed. I felt like, you know, I, I've been in touch with a lot of dudes and he really stood out to me about, like everything, like just down to earth um, and just a family man. And that, that was a big part on uh, one of the reasons why I committed was just my relationship with him. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to continuing to grow that relationship and, uh, you know, being in those quarterback meetings with him. And I, I'm just excited for the future. And uh, Coach Tokarts is an unbelievable guy. And you've got a chance to sit in on some of those quarterback meetings in the past, watch some of the practices. What do you think about the way that Coach Tokars works with his quarterbacks and then, also the developments that he was able to help make Jordan Travis make this past season? Yeah, starting off with what he did with Jordan was unbelievable. I mean, um, I know what – I mean, the leap that Jordan made from last year to, to this past year was just unbelievable. It was it was unheard of. Like, I mean, he was in the – I mean, I feel like he could have been in the run for the Heisman. He had that, that mm-hmm. good of a year. Um, and I think that he could go in for it again and, and you know, have a run this year. But – um. Yeah, I think that had a lot to do with uh, Coach Norvell and Coach Tokarts. Just and the way that Coach Tokarts, um, you know, makes the dudes practice, it's you have to finish every rep every time. Like, there's no taking plays off. Like, if it's an RPO, you're going to run through the line. You're going to run five yards and burst. And he holds you to that, and uh, he holds he holds you to a standard. And uh, I think that's huge for why the quarterback play was so good this year. And Camden, you mentioned that relationship uh, with Ron Dugans earlier. You know, how has that connection continued to grow ever since you uh, committed to FSU over a year ago? And then also, what do you think about the progress that the wide receivers made on the field this past year? Oh, um, I'll start off with the progress. I mean, you know, Coach Dugans, I love Coach Dugans, but, um, you know, people were a little worried about him and what he was doing. And, um, you know, so and then he got that year extension, and I was like, all right, he's going to be here longer. That's good. And um, I had seen some articles, um, you know, some negative articles about Coach. I was like, dang, you know, I really like Coach. I, I want him to be here when I'm here. And then, shoot, by the end of the season, I mean, you see all these articles about what him and his receiving core have done um, and how he – the players that he had got here and then what they did um, once they got on the field this past season and how they grew – and how they performed, and you know, now everyone's loving Coach Dugans, and I'm like, well, you know, I've, I mean, I've known this, and this is, you know, this is my guy. I, you know, it pumps me up. But um, my my relationship with him is like like Luke's with Coach Tony. I mean, it's it's good. I mean, he's he's my guy. He texts probably three four times a week. You know, just see, just you know, we share scripture together. We um, 
you know, we disciple together. And so, you know, we just talk about anything. I mean, half the time we're not even talking about football. But, um, you know, just things like he was on vacation the other day and he sent me a couple of pictures saying, man, I finally got off. I got a vacation. You know, just, just you know, just – you know, just more than just more than just a coach, almost. You know, just someone. You know, just to communicate with over there. Just more than just like on a coach basis. Cameron, there's a question here on Facebook from Tom asking, "How do you see yourself fitting in Mike Norvell and Alex's offense?" Well, honestly, I I'm down. You know, I'm. Hopefully, y'all will find out here soon enough when it comes out. But I'm, you know, I, you know, I want to do good. I want to score touchdowns, you know, get a whole bunch of receptions. But, you know, I'm just down to do whatever helps the team. So, honestly, wherever they wherever they want to do with me, I'm just – I'm down to do. Um, hopefully, they just throw me everywhere and just don't put – you know, just let me – I use my speed. And, um, you, know, he, you know, we saw a whole bunch of – Honestly, whack plays this season that ended up working, and we we're like, "Dang, what the heck is Coach doing?" But um, you know, hopefully, I can get in on some stuff like that. But you know, I just hope they idolize my speed and just I feel like I can fit in with this offense very well. I wanted to uh, talk about you guys because obviously, you two have built a very good relationship and connection with each other um, throughout this recruiting process. And I mean, we've seen that pay off, you know, over the summer at the elite camp, you guys were connecting a lot. And, you know, I've, I've talked to both of you in the past and you've mentioned that relationship and how even your families are, are starting to get to know one another as well. So just, if you guys can think back to it, I know it's been over a year and stuff now, but when did that connection first, uh, start forming and how do you feel like it's going to help you once you do get to Florida state? And I guess Luke, you can uh, start off if you want. I want to say the connection first started at after a game in that little room that they have where the pictures are taken. I'm pretty sure that's where we first linked up and, and uh, started getting to know each other. If That's right. Is that right? It was either that. I, I do. I, it was either that or it was, it was a camp over the summer that me and you went. Yeah. I, I To be honest with you, I'm not sure when we first met, but I just know like right away we started kicking it off and we hit it off and just – you know, our relationship. No, you're right. Right. You're right. It was after a game. You're right. But yeah. I, th- I thought it was. I thought I met you in the – um, in, y'all were playing pool or something like that. And yep. you got yep. it. But, um, yeah, just like our relationship just took off from there. Um, you know, our family started talking. You know, dads being dads, talk about old times. My dad's a, a super fan. So, he's, you know, reading into all the FSU stuff. So, he knows that his dad played and was a legend there. So, you know, he's picking his brain about all that stuff. And – you know, we just kind of became uh, better and better friends and just started talking more. And um, the seven on seven thing kind of just ended up happening and uh, kind of just took off from there. Just, you know, getting a feel for each other. We thought it'd be cool. Um, you know, 224 commits committed to FSU to be on the same seven on seven team and just get this connection going uh, and starting now just so we have a have an edge on uh, on some of the guys um, when we get there as freshmen and, you know, kind of just like a big thing at Benedictine is brotherhood and kind of just forming that brotherhood and, you know, just creating a bond and stuff to uh, that will hopefully transition over to the field and just make us better together. Yeah. And I know you guys have competed in at least one seven on seven tournament together. I'm not sure if it's been multiple to this point, but you know, it's, it's probably a little different in that setting compared to when you're doing it at FSU's elite camp. So in more of a com- competitive setting, you know, how's that connection building? Yeah, man. I mean, Camden's a freak. He makes my job pretty easy and uh, he can flat out fly. So, you know, just having him out there, it makes my life easy. Just throwing a throwing a fade ball and let him go run it down, just airing it out as far as I can. And he'll go run under it. I don't think you can overthrow him. But uh, yeah, man, he makes my he makes my life easy. And uh, I'm lucky to be able to throw to him. And he's he's a dude. No, Camden, appreciate- you're, you're shaking your head, Camden, but I saw this last summer of where Luke was literally just throwing the ball as far as I think he could, and you were under the ball and made it look easy. So don't shake your head too much. <laughs> well, that was last summer. You you ain't you, you haven't seen what we've been able to do these past two tournaments. Oh, okay. Past like two, it. dude, dude was slinging it. I'm not gonna lie. I, I kind of went up to him. I think it was the first ball he threw to me. I'm like, 
it's like a crossing or something. I wasn't far from this dude threw that thing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like hey, chill out a little bit, man. Chill out a little bit. <laughs> and um, but no. Shoot, your first ball we threw together was a pick six. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was like the first play of the tournament. We got there and it was like no warm up, no nothing. We had to go play because we were late. We got into some like car trouble and then we were late. So we were all slow getting there. Like didn't throw a ball at all. Went out there for like the first rep. And I tried to throw um, like a, a tried to throw a seam route on him, a skinny post, and I tried to fire it in there. And man, I was just so hyped up. I overthrew that thing by like a good five yards right into the defender's chest. I don't even think the defender saw it coming. It nailed him right in the chest. But like <laughs> the first ball I ever threw at him, it got it, it went back for a pit six. So yeah, um, yeah, my bad. Was, I probably shouldn't have brought that up on here. But uh, <laughs> I, was, I saw um, I saw a couple of touchdowns as well. So yeah, other than that. I, I'm pretty sure we've been on we've been on point and I, I mean he catches a ton of touchdowns man so like i said he makes my job pretty easy i want to go back y'all were talking about y'all meeting there and y'all going through all the photo shoots and everything we asked a couple of recruits this what's the best go-to uniform combination because i've seen a few out of you guys specifically i'll let camden go first with this one mm. okay so here's what I'm, so for a game for like an yep. important game I love the traditional garden gold, but for a photo shoot like we did, the all white's crispy. I, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty much I'm gonna have to second that. I think you nailed it right there. For the photo shoot, I think the all white was was sick, but in a game, I think the traditional, you know, garden gold is just nothing really beats that. For sure, I'm gonna stick with the more serious questions, I guess. So, um, transition over. Let's talk about Tribe Twenty Four for a couple of minutes right now, a top five class in the country. You guys have nine um, verbal commitments at this time. And, you know, we're going to get them on here later in the off season, but five-star Cam Davis, one of those guys. And right now, Tribe 24, really building some momentum to uh, start off the spring. And we'll see how it starts going over the next couple of weeks or months, but just, you know, how far do you guys think uh, this class can go with uh, how it started off? Uh, to be honest with you, I think we can go right to the top. Like, I mean, I'm focused on making this class number one. Like, I, I really think that we we already have, like, a great foundation, and, and it's special right now. And, I mean, just a couple other guys that we got our eyes on, like, I, I really do think that we can make this class number one. And uh, I feel like we could we could have the best class in the nation. I, I agree with that. Um, back in, shoot. Oh, there we go. I knew we'd get him eventually mid sentence. I was just waiting for it because you usually get about five minutes and then it cuts and then it'll come back in. But yeah. Luke, uh, obviously, you know, you're the quarterback of this class and you've told me in the past, you know, you feel like it kind of comes on you a little bit to to keep building tribe twenty four. And not asking you to name any names, but obviously you're recruiting some guys, trying to get them to join you in Tallahassee. Whenever you're reaching out to some of these players, just what kind of stuff are, are you telling them about Florida State and what are you trying to sell them on, I guess? Yeah, just just trying to sell them. Like, I mean, there's really not much to sell them on. I mean, if you can't see it for yourself, then, I, I mean, something's wrong. Like, I mean, the program, we're, we're shooting up in the rankings again. You know, we're, we're up there. I feel like this class is already filled with some some straight-up dudes. And, I mean – I feel like we're, we're creating a winning culture over here and coach Norvell is creating that winning culture over here and bringing us back to the top. So, I mean, if, if you don't want to be a part of a winning team and, and, and at a place where the fan base is so strong and special and the tradition is, is uh, so firm, um, then what are you doing? Like, I mean, if you can't see that, then, then something's wrong. I was going to ask both of y'all this too, because it affects both of y'all's position, but seeing coach Atkins and what he's building there, and that offensive line, I don't know if y'all probably seen all over Twitter the videos that we're posting and other outlets, but the size of these guys and the talent that's coming in and transfers that are wanting to play. What does that say about Coach Atkins? Because y'all have obviously been around him quite a bit, and it's fun being able to interview Atkins, but I just wonder what he is kind of behind the scenes. I'll let Camden answer this one. Oh, Coach Atkins is my guy. He makes me laugh every time I'm there. But – um. No, the past couple of days, I've been, you know, we've been seeing a whole bunch of skill players, you know, commitments and, you know, they're showing up and stuff and people are going after. But the past couple of days, I'm seeing uh, these offensive lines and how we're getting them here. And we're hoping that, you know, that we're we're going to land them. I'm like, dang, these motherfuckers are big, you know. <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> no, no, like Coach Atkins, he 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 had a good season this season. He, he like y'all said, getting all these people in the portal is just huge, and get you know, hopefully we land a couple more commitments in um our class, the twenty four class, and that's gonna be huge. Um, you know, you know, because sometimes you know we you know positions like me and Luke are in, we may get all the fame, but. I, gosh, I mean, we can't do it without them. So, you know, that's a huge part sure. on, the, on the football field. So, I hope, which I, you know, I hope, but at the same time, I know we're going to get it done. We're going to get who needs to be a part of, you know, our team, you know, a part of Florida State. And, you know, they're going to get the right guys. Coach Atkins is going to get the right guys. Coach Norvell is going to get the right guys. So, I'm not worried. Um, you know, I've, I've had other colleges tell me, um, they're like, man, Coach Atkins, he's doing good. He's probably going to get a head coaching job somewhere else. Like, you sure you want to go somewhere with a new OC and all this stuff? You know, they're just – even other schools are just seeing saying how good Coach Atkins are, is doing. Luke, you're going to be back on campus this weekend for what looks like probably the biggest recruiting weekend for Florida State um, this spring. A lot of guys going to be on campus. Looks like some former players are going to be making their way back as well. So, just how excited are you get to get back to Tallahassee this weekend and, you know, how much are you looking forward to that event? Oh, I'm pumped to be able to come back home, man. I can't, I can't wait. Um, can't wait to go make some uh, new relationships, you know, try and recruit some dudes and, you know, get them to pull the trigger and, uh, and come home um, and, you know, get, get to meet some of the, uh, some of the alum. That's, that's going to be awesome. I'm pretty sure they said that um, Winston's going to be there. So I'm pumped for him, man. That's, that's going to be a pretty cool dude to meet. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And then just, you know, trying to recruit some of the dudes. Uh, I know there's a whole bunch of linemen and, and some receivers that are coming in that I'm going to be trying to, uh, you know, talk to and create a relationship with. And, uh, as well as my guy, Charles Lester, I know, I know he's going to be, he's going to be there. So yes. uh, man, I, I'm trying to build that, try to build that relationship with him. And, uh, he's a dude. So that's really, that's really just, uh, what I plan on doing this, this, this coming trip. Are you doing a little bit of recruit on your end too? I saw a reaction from you, Camden, of some of these guys that Luke is also going after. I know that we're, you're trying to figure out if you'll be here uh, this weekend, but if it doesn't work out, are you doing things on the back end of ways of going through social media and such to get in contact with some of these dudes? Uh, I'm doing, I'm doing a little bit. You know, I'm trying to do what I can. But um, mm -hmm. no, speaking on Charles, I got to meet him. Um, I was doing a seven. My school was taking part of a seven on seven tournament held by Florida state and um, Charles, he was taking a visit and they, um, they drove him out there just to meet with me. And I got to speak with him for 10, 15 minutes after, um, after I was done with my tournament. And you know, that's, that's a cool dude, Charles. And um, just seeing what he's been able to do on the football field, I'm like, shoot, we got to have him. And I just, you know, the way, the way he was talking to everyone else, well, shoot, Luke, you FaceTimed – Coach Tony FaceTimed us while we were out there. Yeah, I remember that. You were at a, a little seven on seven tournament and Charles was out there, and uh, Coach Coach Tokarts FaceTimed all of us, and we were all talking out there. It was it was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Oh um, no, Charles is a cool dude, and I'm you know I personally got to meet him, and I hope we can land him. You know, we me and you got to meet Landon um, yeah. last time we were there. Shoot, I was I was trying to sell like my dad was selling a mobile home. <laughs> to land. I, was, I was like, dude, I was like, Luke was like, what are you doing? I'm like. Like, you know, this is where you – this is where – shoot, you wanted to be here. You know, we had had a little rough patch back with old um, – shoot, was I'm, – I'm not sure if it was Taggart was still there when he decoded or if it was still Norvell. Either way, either way, whatever it was, I mean, he's seen what we're doing. He keeps coming back. I mean, if he, I mean, he wouldn't keep coming back if he didn't want to be a part of what this is. Yeah, and, he, um, he's a freak. He is He is huge. Oh yeah, I, I like to think I'm a pretty tall person, and I was sitting there looking up to him the whole time. Like, I mean, that is a that is a big dude right there. Yeah, you made me look like a midget, and he made me look like a dwarf. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah. So like, just a couple guys like that. Um, hopefully, shoot. I think I got. I need to text Charles. Um, I think yeah, I got. I think I got his number over the um during that conversation. I mean, and hopefully I'll be able to be there and you know, kind of help look out. I'll, I'll find out here soon enough. But, um, you know, it's it's a, it's a big part. And, shoot, I hope I can be there. But, Luke, you know, do your thing, dude. We got to get them. I know it, man. I'm on it. I know we're, we're winding down here a little bit. But Florida State, obviously, starting to bring that winning culture back to Tallahassee. And at the same time, you guys have both been a part of 
winning programs at the high school level. Luke, you know, being a back-to-back state champion now, winning winning that first one, well, first one as you as a starter back in December, and then Camden as well over there at Columbia. You guys were able to make it to the state semifinals this past year, and you've had some success during your high school career as well. So, I mean, this one's for both of you, but how do you feel like having that success, being perennial winners at the high school level is going to help you – as you make this transition to Florida State, where obviously they're trying to get back amongst the elite of college football? Yeah, I feel like, you know, I feel like Georgia and Florida football are some of the best. And, uh, you know, as, as you start moving through the playoffs and you get deeper and deeper, I mean, you're going to start going coming up against some dudes who who are going to play at the next level and, and who are freaks. Um, so I think that that's huge. And, um, you know, if, if they're going to play at the next level, I, I feel like it's, it's a great test and a great little uh, – you know, pre thing before we get to the real level um, and just being able to, to go against some dudes who are committed to some other places and have offers from every place under the sun. I feel like I feel like it's a great test and, uh, you know, it's awesome. And I love the competition and, you know, I feel like I can really go up against anybody out there. So I'm not going to back down from anybody or anything like that. I wanted to bring up a guy that's really talented in y'all's class, and this will be my last question, but y'all have got him committed, and y'all play a lot of ball with him, and that's Cam Davis, y'all's running back that's going to be coming in this class. What do you say about him also strengthening? I know there's a lot of schools heavily after him now, and you know he's named a few that said, well, you're a little too late on this. Um, Coach, Coach Yak doing a really good job recruiting him also, and it seems like relationship is nice. But what does it say about Cam Davis being committed this long and also y'all making sure that he's coming in with you guys? Oh, um, you know, it just shows at all this heat that he's getting from all these other colleges. It just – it kind of backs what me and Luke kind of said earlier in the podcast, just saying, you know, Florida State's the place to be. I mean, it's a special place, and you want to be a part of that. I mean, it, you know – he just well, Cam wants to be a part of it, just like we want to. Um, no matter how many hits he gets from any other place, and you know it, it shows something because he he's a dude. He's a dude, and you see him on just about every leaderboard you can think of. Um, so it just it kind of backs what we're saying on how special this place is. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'm gonna second what Camden said. I, I mean. I know Cam is, has offers from everywhere under the sun, and I'm sure he's got a ton of schools throwing different things at him left and right. But, you know, it just shows how much he's invested in Florida State and in this coaching staff and in this program that with, with all that being thrown at him and all those offers, he's still staying loyal and stuff. And I think that's that's huge, and that's a high-character thing for him. Um, and, and those are the type of dudes that we want. We want people who are all in. Um, you know, we don't want any dude, you know – halfway in and you know looking at other places and like uh oh, maybe you know i don't know but we want dudes who are all in on florida state and like they want to be here and they want to be a part of this class and they they want to come win championships and those are the type of dudes we want and you know i, I think that cam cam davis is one of those dudes i want to play baseball with him too so <laughs> I can say yeah you might see him on the diamond i guess last thing uh for me just What's uh what's next for you guys this offseason? What kind of things are you going to be working on, Camden? I know you're involved in baseball right now. Luke, you're starting to transition into lacrosse from basketball, and you've got that Elite 11 coming up uh, in a couple of months. So just what kind of stuff are you guys going to be focused on, you know, leading up to the summer? Yeah, I'm going to be doing a, uh, some seven-on-seven seven here with with Camden. We'll do, we got a little bit more to go with that. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. And then uh, – kind of just transition into into school football but you know on the side I'm I'm trying to put on some weight get get a little bigger frame going um because I know that I'm gonna if I'm gonna be playing any chance at playing in in college pretty early I'm gonna have to put on some weight because there's some pretty big dudes coming at me so I'm gonna be hitting the gym real hard and uh you know trying to trying to put some weight on and some muscle oh um Shoot, I'll be on that diamond. I'm not gonna lie. Um, just p- playing these two sports, they they kind of make me miss the other. So, you know, play after after I'll play baseball for a couple months, it'll make me hungry to get back on that football field. Um, you know, I'll still be running routes probably twice a week or at least once a week because you know, I got a new coaching staff, so I'm trying to get familiar with this with um, Coach Allen. I say new, it's new to us, but he was here a couple years ago. Um, Coach mm-hmm. Allen, um, trying to get back on his, you know his game plan, um, you know, trying to keep the team pumped up. So I'll get be out there as much as I can 
and then I'll be doing the 707 with Luke. But, you know, I'll be playing some baseball um, in between now and then, just, you know, trying to level out both of them and just, you know, just enjoy it. Enjoy the last little bit of high school that you get. Yep, take advantage of it as much as you can. Dustin, do you have any more? That's it for me. Okay. Yeah, man. Camden, Luke, both of you guys spending a lot of time on here with us. Definitely appreciate it. I know y'all got a lot of school left and then also some sports, but best of luck academically and then sports wise. Y'all stay healthy. Appreciate y'all a ton. It's going to be a pleasure for us to be able to cover y'all for the next couple of years throughout your career on the high school side and including Florida State once you arrive here in Tallahassee. So appreciate both of you guys and great answers, everything. Y'all, y'all are great at this. Yes, sir. Thanks for having us on. Absolutely. Y'all have a great evening. Thanks, guys. All right, y'all. Sweet deal. So that is both probably your your bell cows. Maybe there's definitely some more included in that class. But Luke Cromwell Hawk and Camden Fryer with us this evening. Two kids that don't sound like kids. They give us some really good interviews. I'd I kind of know Camden just a little bit around being that camp, but he's hard not to like because I, I really like his answers. He, just straight up, he's not going to really hide anything. <laughs> yeah, they're both two very impressive young men. Like you said, Camden just kind of keeps it real all the time. And then Luke as well. I mean, he's made tremendous progress when it comes to speaking to the media and, and doing these interviews and things like that over the past year. So, I mean, it's just been really cool to see, and it just goes into showing that Florida State, you know, they're recruiting not only some really good players on the field, but they're trying to bring in these quality people off the field to keep uh, building up that locker room and to keep flipping the culture under Mike Norvell. Yep, and I can tell from Camden's side, he likes to work. He likes to put out there and work (laughs) a lot, and it's continuous. But both of those guys playing a lot of sports. Luke playing three and then at least the three. Side, yeah, at least three. And then Camden has got two and hit a grand slam. Uh, I think last night, I believe he did that. So uh, a guy that also wants to try to bring over his talents to Dick Hauser stadium with Link Jarrett. So we'll see what ends up happening there. And it was good to get some word on Cam Davis, Florida state's five-star running back commit, who is getting a lot of attention right now, as he should. And this is this shouldn't be a shock to anybody, but a lot of schools heavily after him, some big-time schools, and they're trying to cons- try to seal him up and get him to Tallahassee without anybody else nabbing him. For sure. Yeah, that's going to be one that Florida State, they're going to have to hold on to. But at the same time, Cam Davis is a guy that's been committed for over two years. And when you look at the time frame of him committing, you know, he committed after Mike Norvell's three and six season at Florida State. He stuck with Florida State after they had that five and seven season. So to see what they did this past year, winning 10 games and the amount of progression that we saw, not only from the team, but also from the running back room in particular, you know, you've got to think that's something that's pretty exciting for Cam Davis, a guy who also grew up a Florida State fan. A lot of Florida State fans in this class and, We'll get to it here in just a little bit, Dustin. A big time, massive recruiting weekend up ahead. Busy weekend for you. And, you know, it's funny them talking, them being fans of Jalen Ramsey and Jameis Winston. You know, mm-hmm. Luke's face, you know, brightening up there, talking about Jameis Winston. These guys used to watch them when they were younger and they look up to these guys. So for Florida State, Magnervell, the entire staff, off field staff, getting this whole set up. This weekend going will be huge on the recruiting side of things. So Luke will be there for that and try to get into the ear. And I also see, you know, Camden also doing some recruiting on Lester. You know, that's one that we're going to keep a very close eye on because it seems like Florida State is one of those schools ahead of everybody else on the relationship side of things where Lester can could could pop. You know, it's one of those things where you watch a few players, Dustin, and you got a few named highlighted before going into the weekend. You're like, well, the relationships are already there. How much more can you do until you're like, it's time to just go ahead and make it, you know, official or public at least. Yeah, that's one of those guys that Florida State has been on now for a couple of years, and they've consist- consistently made him a priority. Um, he's consistently been at the top of that defensive back bo- uh, defensive backboard want list, and you know he's developed that relationship with Mike Norvell. He's been to Florida State so many times. I mean, on that last visit, he was saying there's not really much more that he can see around here, and 
you know, if you think about it, going into this weekend, um, like like I was saying earlier, the biggest recruiting weekend that Florida State is probably going to have this spring. It's going to stretch from Friday to Sunday. I mean, we'll we'll see how the spring game goes, but I mean, this one in particular is pretty stacked uh, with talent. It was about this time a year ago when Florida State was holding another big recruiting weekend, and they had a guy come to campus, a four-star defensive tackle from North Carolina, who not that many people thought he was going to commit to Florida State, KJ Sampson. And then, bam, out of the blue, he popped, joined Tribe 23. And from there, the rest was history. Stuck with FSU the entire way, obviously signed with the Seminoles back in December. So, I mean, it could be that kind of weekend for FSU with so much talent on campus. This might be one where we see at least one commit, maybe multiple. Well, we'll get to some more into detail on that in just a few. Let's jump to the spring practice number two that happened just a couple of hour, hours ago. I'm not going to lie. We, when we weren't lying. We drove here quick as hell to make sure we were here for the interview with Luke and Cam. I got pulled over. If I... I was about to I say, don't I don't know how he made it back in time. But, <laughs> yeah, Florida State just wrapped up a couple hours ago. Their second practice, Mike Norvell talking with us, and I thought it was unique to hear from him starting off here, Dustin. Noting on the newcomers and specifically these freshmen coming in, and he said that they are working at an accelerated pace and getting along with the system, understanding kind of the flows of practice, and he's been really impressed. And we heard this a little bit last year, but we can see with our own eyes because they give us this full access to watch the practices all throughout the spring camp. You get to see the difference from maybe some newcomers last year to some of these. These guys look like they've been in here for a couple of weeks, whereas you know sometimes it takes some guys a little bit longer. But I thought today, specifically coming off of Norvell's comments, it fit perfectly. Some of these freshmen like Vandravius, Jacobs, yep. coming in like that and making plays, flying around, doing this. And some of those defensive backs, D. Lou, we'll talk about a few of them here in a second. But just these freshmen, they, they look like they've been here for a little while, and it's not fair almost. It's been impressive, and Florida State's uh, high school recruiting class took a little bit of criticism from the fans, but when you look at the guys that they do have uh, signed and enrolled here early, I mean, these are all quality takes and guys that look like they can contribute right now and some that are obviously going to contribute into the future. But like you said, I mean, through the first two days, Fondravius Jacobs might be the best true freshman that we've seen out there. I mean, he's making – a ton of plays across the field. Monday in particular was a special day for him, a special debut. But even coming back today, you know, made a couple nifty grabs there as well. And, you know, at the same time, you see that he's still a true freshman because there was a play where he didn't sprint all the way through the end of the rep and Mike Norvell was right there to let him know about it. And I was telling Logan this at practice, but I think it, that's something that Mike Norvell really enjoys. Whenever he's out here early in a spring camp or a fall camp, and he sees one of these newcomers maybe slack just a little bit, just 1%, and he knows that he gets to go blow up and, and criticize <laughs> them. And I think he makes it a little bit extra than maybe he would do for someone who's been on the team for a little bit, just to give them a little taste of the Mike Norvell experience. But Jacobs, he, he got that taste um, today. But regardless, he showed some promise. We got to see Hakeem Williams go up vertical and make, and make a big catch on the sideline over there during, I, I believe it was uh, – I believe it was one-on-ones. And then going to your point, Logan, to the other side of the ball, Quindarius Jones had a pretty impressive pass deflection. K.J. Kirkland, um, he's living up to the hype with that six-foot-two build coming in for a pass deflection. So some of the way that these guys are kind of assimilating themselves pretty early on has definitely been impressive. It has been. And like you said, Dustin, Norvell will hold everyone accountable, no matter if you're a transfer either, an older transfer like Jaheim Bell. This happened on Monday. If you guys listen to our instant reaction to the first practice, Jaheim Bell. Yeah. When you hear Norvell yelling, it's definitely about not finishing the play fully. So when we were talking about this, it meaning, all right, you caught the ball. You, you can make a phenomenal grab. And there's guys out there that are making really nice grabs. And even if they fall to the ground, you still got to get up hold that ball tight and make sure you run an extra 20 yards and a full on sprint. That's how Norbell runs these practices. And a lot of guys, you know, are going to get an earful of Norvell. And I, like Dustin said, I think too, Norvell does like that. He likes being able to use that <laughs> while he can, because after a while guys get into a rhythm, the same thing happened with Deuce span last year where that was a consistent thing. And then when we got the fall camp, never heard from Norvell getting into his ear, just guys, Got to get it ingrained into their heads. So uh, just welcome welcome to spring camp and welcome newcomers, no matter who you are. But 
highlight of the day out of the unit wise position groups, Dustin, this was a tight end day. In my yep. opinion, guys making plays left and right. Preston Daniel, two back to back, great grabs over the middle. Jaheem bell with a pop pop up ball with Renardo green and coverage on him. caught the ball there on the sideline and having to finish the play too. Um, you know, Marquise and Douglas just shows his kind of consistent, uh, consistency with Jordan Travis. Jordan Travis likes going to him quite a bit. And then also another transfer, Kyle Morlock, too, starting to get into a rhythm here, ending off the second spring practice of camp. But, Dustin, how about that tight end group, man? You kind of nailed it. Extremely impressive on Wednesday, um, whether it was the transfers or whether it was guys that have been here a couple of years. The, the catches from Preston Daniel in particular drew some oohs and ahs from the media that were in attendance, especially the one that he came up with uh, down the middle, a play where he kind of had to go up vertical. And, and it, I mean, it was a tough catch. He had to go up, catch it, and then he went down because of how high he had to get up. But I mean, yeah, all four of those guys, extremely impressive. And it just shows now what Florida State's tight end room, the tools that they're going to be able to work with uh, throughout this spring and, and, and fall as well as they kind of figure out how that unit is going to go. It's going to be interesting because Jaheim and Kyle Morlock have come out pretty strong. But at the same time, I mean, Preston Daniel today especially has made some flashes. You're, you're seeing some consistency starting to develop a little bit from Mark Easton. I've liked some early signs that I've seen out of Brian Courtney. So, I mean, there's a ton of guys in that tight end room who are going to be fighting for playing time. And I think that's just only going to increase really the, the level of competition between them. And we really saw that today. I got to see first glance just straight up with him a couple of times. Didn't get to see him much on Monday, but Braden Fisk, Western Michigan defensive tackle. We know he's limited to start off camp, and while well, we have the green jersey on strolling into practice today, but whoo, my goodness, he looks the part. And we saw him spending some time with Fabian Lovett, too. I asked Fabian after practice about their relationship, and he just chuckled and laughed and said, man, he's good people. He's fit in well. I mean, that's kind of just how it goes for Norvell and what he likes to go into picking some of these transfers. They've got to first fit well into the locker room. And Braden Fisk, per Fabian Lovett, has fit that mold. But, man, Dustin, you and I got to see him walk, and that is a big human being. I think there's a lot of optimism for at a full health too so that's also a good sign but just looking the part yeah that's just thinking of fabian and those two next to one another is who kind of gives you like goosebumps man that, that's a that's a nasty tandem in the middle two uh grown-ass men for sure and i think you've got to add darrell jackson right into that mix as well because i mean man that that guy is just as big you know six foot five six foot six over 325 pounds and he carries it extremely well. But Fisk in particular, you know, a guy who has spent so much time, almost half a decade at this point, in a college strength and conditioning program, you can tell that's really paid off um, for him coming out of high school when he was only 6'2", 6'3", you know, 215, 220 pounds, and so now getting up to that six foot five, 300 pounds. It really shows the work ethic that he's got. And I, I think that's really going to help as he transitions uh, to Florida State. And he may be limited right now, but I don't think that's something to worry about moving forward. This is a guy that's going to be a, a big contributor, if not a starter, on that defense. Norvell, at the end of the press conference, was telling us, you know, the schedule, what Florida State's going to go into on Friday, wearing shells, which means physicality. And this is where the trenches change quite a bit. Yeah, this is cool. We got the shorts on. You got the I think Norvell calls them pajamas. That's what he did. That's what he said. He calls the guys wearing just jerseys and shorts pajamas, but things are going to change a little bit differently on Friday where we'll have a little bit more of physicality, but you can still go off of some one-on-ones here and this is fine. We're going to do it one last time. And then I think things really start getting realistic once the pads come on. And I'm interested to see too, if Andravius can kind of keep the streak going once he puts on some pads and things get a little bit more handsy, but there were some guys that stood out. I want to go to Bell on that catch that he made. I know we talked about him earlier, but that was a really nice grab. Popped up ball. He stays with it. He grabs it. He's able to stay in bounds and finishes the play. But Jaheim Bell also had one. I think one DB that continues to stand out, Dustin, is Greedy Vance. He has been a menace for Florida State's offense. And it's such a 180. And it just is cool to see a guy with growth 
And have having this much time and Florida State system and then going through practices this last spring, he was a guy that was one that took a while to get going. It took a long while. You know, he was getting beat on routes, guys beat, beating him wide open and everything. Now, look at this spring. A whole year later, he's translated into being – he's transformed into being the top performer in that defensive back right now in that defensive back room right now alongside Renato Green, but Greedy Vance is the guy that is just in everybody's way at the moment for that offense. It's a good point. I remember a year ago whenever Florida State started off spring practice, and I think it was after the very first practice, but we were we were talking, compiling some notes, and we were like, man, is, is Greedy Vance going to be able to play at Florida State? Because he was just getting taken to task uh, throughout that opening practice. And, you know, there were some other moments as well but like you said, the growth that he's made from last year, starting off this this spring practice compared to the last one, has been extremely impressive. I mean, came out on Monday, pulled down an interception, had a couple of pass deflections, and then comes out today, um, deflects a pass on his first rep. I can't remember against, uh, against uh, who he was covering. But then on his next rep, comes back and wins one against Johnny Wilson. And remember, we're talking about Greedy Vance, who's not over six foot, so – winning a matchup against a guy who's nearly a foot taller than him. And then just throughout the day, there was one play in particular where he had position on Ja'Kai Douglas on the sideline but failed to make a play on the ball, and Douglas went up and snagged it. But then he made sure on his next rep, whenever him and Douglas were matched up, he was extremely tight on him, and he had no chance of uh, coming down with a completed pass. So Greedy, definitely a guy that I've been impressed with through two practices. Yeah, I like that combo, those two going at it. Iron sharpens iron, and Ja'Kai Douglas, I think, is probably Florida State's most crisp route runner, in my opinion. Great feet. Not hard to obviously catch because of his speed, but just the way that he can plant his feet a couple times and just move on and build his, build his route, it's not easy to cover, and Greedy Vance has done a good job there. But I just like being able to bring up the transformation he's made. I think that's great, and it's good for that defensive back room. Uh, we got to see – yeah, we got to see Hakeem Williams. We talked about him earlier, but Hakeem starting to kind of build something here going into now the third day of spring camp on Friday. But Hakeem showing some flashes, which you're like, yeah, that doesn't look like a true freshman because we're viewing these one on ones from the far. We're very yeah, far. Yeah, we're very, very far. <laughs> so we're having to use the binoculars for these. But if you weren't going to have binoculars and you were just looking, bare eye Hakeem doesn't look that. that's why we have to keep on using the binoculars because like that can't be Hakeem that's way too big of a player that's not Jaheem Hakeem Williams looks the part but now putting it onto the field and connecting with some of these quarterbacks has been nice but I think he and, and Brock Glenn are, are two two along with Vandravius Jacobs that on the offensive side are moving at, at a certain accelerated speed like Norvell was talking about earlier in the press conference there were some flashes today. Like I said, I can't remember if it was during one-on-ones or seven-on-sevens, but he came down with a vertical catch on the sideline um, against a defensive back. And then there was another play, I think, uh, just kind of shows that he's still a true freshman. He slipped on a route, and I think there was one where maybe the ball slightly slipped through his hands, and Norvell pulled him over, walked him over to the video board, and the video board's facing the other way. We can't see it, but showed him something on that board, and, and they talked about it for a good minute. So, I mean, you're seeing the potential is there for Hakeem and it's just now about putting together the the fundamentals the technical skills of being a wide receiver because I mean he's an athletic freak and once he figure out figures out how to get the routes down um his feet different things like that I mean he might be someone that develops into an unstoppable weapon so we'll see how it goes uh from here still pretty early on my favorite part of practice is Dustin are in the trenches when you've got one-on-ones ah, going on I thought you were gonna say kicking kicking yeah do you have a kicking update for us? Did you write those notes? Man, down? it is tough to – I'm I'm over there trying with all my might to see if the field goal is going in, if it's wide. It's like impossible to see with the angle that we have from the top of the baseball stadium. But So this is – it's not really a guess. Well, we don't have the refs too. That's worth mentioning. We don't have the refs to show us because Mike Norvell does bring in refs in fall camp to – Makes it so much easier. Yeah. Um, but anyway uh, – yeah, we got to see a couple attempts today. From my point of view, I don't know if this is correct or not, but from my point of view, it looked like Ryan Fitzgerald was good from 32 yards out and was wide from 42 uh, yards out. And then um, Tyler Keltner was good from both ranges, 32 and 41 yards. And I believe during the first practice, 
Fitz made both of his, but Keltner went one of two. But don't, don't credit me. <laughs> yeah. On. No. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I'm trying. We, we got to figure out a better angle for that one. We're pretty far away from those goal posts. A uh, couple more, a th- couple things more to note on. We're going to go into the trenches here, actually. But like I was saying, I love, I love one on ones. My favorite part. But once again, we're far away. I'm hoping once the pads come on, maybe they'll get a little bit closer to us. I doubt that's going to happen because it seems like Mike Norvell is pressing that. Yeah, we're going to be working outside when it's hot and you're just going to have to deal with it type of deal. So I'm going to have to watch from far away. But the binoculars work today to see Ontavius Woody, who initially came in at the offensive line position, transitioned over near the latter half of the season over to defensive tackle, which wasn't maybe a ton of a shock because we've seen him play that at the high school level. But the one thing about Woody, and I talked about this, all, all mental. You've got the physical side of things. We know his tenacity. It's, it's, you don't get that from any kind of player. This is Ontavious Woody. But the biggest thing, I need him to listen and get, get going with Odell Hagens. And he put on a really nasty spin, uh, backspin today and got straight to the quarterback. And I hadn't seen Ontavious movie. Ontavious Woody moved that quick, Dustin. And just to see also the entire defensive line, Jared Verse jumping on top of him and everything, you know, it's very competitive between those two groups. But for him to make that play, it's something that we want to see more of. And the biggest thing was getting the technique down because he can bull rush you. Yeah, that's fine. You can do that. But at some points, that's not going to work every time. You're going to have to be you're going to have to put a move on somebody and use your hands correctly. And Odell Higgins, I think now knowing what he gets to work with. It's just going to take a lot of listening, but I, I'm seeing progress from Woody. And you know mm-hmm. what? We don't have the pads on, so I'm not going to just say, oh, my God, you know, Antavius Woody, we're going to see a lot of playing time out of him, and it's only spring camp. But I just want to see progress out of him. And uh, we're seeing a little sign of that, and we'll see if that continues once those guys, once those offensive linemen put pads on. Uh, things will probably be a little bit more difficult, but that guy has some power, dude. Uh, I'm a I'm a Woody guy. I just got to get things. You're a Woody just guy. See progress, man. Got to see development. Development. You're a Woody guy. I'm a I'm a Woody guy. I'm a Woody guy. And then I got a note here too. My guy Joshua Farmer sack. I mean, just looked easy. You know, Florida State's figuring out a couple things on the inside of their offensive line right now, so he's kind of licking his chops. I'll be honest with you, but. Farmer, you know, power just gets right through that offensive line and comes away with a sack, I believe, on Jordan Travis, too. So, uh, you know, the, the defensive tackles having a nice day. But I don't want to dive in. That's why I only got two notes on here. There's a lot more from the skill guys. It's but hard. Once, one, once, we, once we have pads on, I can guarantee you this list that I have on my notes will be 10-plus of those trenches. I really like watching it because I really got to see a first sign from Jared Verse immediately. I was like, ooh. Robert Scott, this is not going to be a fall, good or fun fall camp for you. It was definitely good because they got better with one another. But mm, 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 you can tell early on who's about it and who's not. But yeah, I'd, I'd love some. I love some trenches and OL versus DL, dude. Love it. That's the that's the tough thing with these practices when they're not in the pads. Uh, when the offensive linemen and the defensive linemen are going up against each other, or working in individuals, and you're not you're not just getting the the amount of contact that you would when they're full go and, you know, allowed to go at each other. It makes it a lot different in uh, these practices and it it makes it a lot easier to evaluate some of these guys as well. Right now we're just pretty much going off fundamentals and hand placement and technique and just how they look physically, things like that. But once Friday arrives and the pads start popping a little bit, like you said, Logan, we're going to see which one of these guys steps up and, who, you know, if any of these guys begin to back down a little bit. But in particular on Friday, you know, really excited to watch some of these freshmen um, as they put on the pads for the first time at Florida State and, and really go at it. Because like uh, Jared Verse, we got to speak to him on Monday after practice, and he mentioned that Jeremiah Byers is as big as a trash talker as he is. So if that's true, I'm really excited to see those guys match up during one-on-ones and other parts of practice. Yeah, sign me up. That's all I needed. A uh, fully healthy verse and Jeremiah Byers going out in. I like a little bit of chatter too. So 
Please. I, I'm hoping they do that in the IPF, so then we can watch that up close. But I'm expecting Get the binoculars to, ready, buddy. Yeah, I'm expecting to have to use those binoculars, which is fine. That's okay. But if I could talk with Mike and maybe switch up a few things, that'd be cool. But watching Atkins and Odell, his unit go against one another is very, very fun. Uh, one last thing here, I'll mention Winston Wright practicing, yep. you know, making some grabs here and there, but nothing worth crazy noting on from today's practice. I thought on Monday we got a good sign of where he's at and what percent he's at, I would say. But things are, are moving along. And I think this spring camp is huge for him, not only in just building some chemistry still with some of those quarterbacks, but the, continuing to also get healthy and get fully healthy ahead of, you know, we're a ways away, but fall camp. That's really the main focus here, but hearing some really good things from Ron Dugan's talking about him and his mindset going into this, uh, you know, Winston, you don't have to worry about him not working hard and trying to get back. He is doing everything imaginable he can, but he's out there catching passes from quarterbacks. We saw him going in one-on-ones yet on Monday. So, I think there's there's promise there, but definitely some more work to be done, in my opinion. Like you said, they get some incremental steps at this time. I think it's big that he's pretty much shed. He doesn't have anything on that previously injured leg, um, whereas before he had on a, a pretty hefty brace and a sleeve at, at different times. Now he's just going, you know, straight nothing on that leg, and I think that shows a little bit of his confidence. Um, and yeah, like Logan said as well. We got to see him participate in the one-on-ones and seven-on-seven. And that was the first time that I remember him actually catching a pass um, when a defender was in coverage against him since he's had that injury. We saw him work during the fall a little bit, but it appeared that he was still pretty limited and the burst wasn't quite there and, and you know, didn't, didn't look as good as he did on Monday when it came to those actual competitive reps. So we'll see, see how it goes from here. He's another one who I want to see when the pads come on just how how much are they gonna how much contact are they gonna let him take um this spring and you know we'll we'll see how it goes and just I guess that make uh talking about Winston kind of reminded me Logan we also need to bring up that following uh Monday's practice Mike Norvell announced that Robert Scott, Micah Pittman, Kevin Knowles, Aaron Hester, and Malcolm Ray um will not be available for Florida State during the spring. And also Braden Fisk and Jaden Jones are among some players that Mike Norvell mentioned will be um, limited throughout the spring as well. Yep, man. So that creates a lot of more room for some players and to come in and get some playing time and get some good 11 on 11 work in. So, uh, you know, it kind of is what it is. I, I'm hoping nothing's too bad. I mean, for all of these guys, but for a few of them, some of these guys, big time starters for Florida State. And we're going to continue to see what's going on there. But, you know, for the time being, Mungerville tells us straight up, we will not see them this spring camp. But, you know, there's a lot of guys that need to jump in. Definitely the tackle position, you know, with Robert Scott not being in there. There's a lot of younger guys that are fighting for this, for that spot. And I'm looking right, right at Julian Armella, right at him. And, you know, he's got to continue to get healthy, fully healthy, too. But seeing him out there today, it seems like we're seeing progress day by day. And Julian Armella is not going to be an easy player to take off the field for Florida State in his career. He's going to find the field sooner rather than later. So something we'll be keeping a close eye on as camp further moves on this spring. Uh, Dustin, if that's going to wrap up our practice report, let's jump into what is going to be a crazy weekend ahead. We've you know, you'd been tipped off on this for quite a while, this event being geared up for <sighs> recruits, former FSU stars coming in left and right. You know, they tried to do this last year with trying to get some big names in there, but things just didn't end up working out for some of those. But it seems like Florida State's setting up to have a fun weekend, definitely either football and then also going over to the baseball diamond, also with former FSU star MLB star, my San Francisco Giants, mm-hmm. Buster Posey being in Tallahassee. I, I'm, I just picked a bad weekend to go to a wedding, didn't I? I just picked a really bad weekend for this. I'm missing out. Apparently, yeah, a bunch of uh, Florida State greats expected to come through. You know, we heard Luke Cromanhawk say Jameis Winston, one of those expected to be in Tallahassee. And we've also heard some names such as Derwin James and 
Jalen Ramsey, um, Jermaine Johnson was at practice early, earlier this week. It seems like he's going to stick through the weekend as well. So Florida State really making a priority to uh, bring back some of these players that now have developed really into faces where if you're a high school recruit and you watch the NFL or you watch Florida State when – you were a kid and growing up a little bit, you know, you know, these guys and Derwin James, Jalen Ramsey, those are names where when you say that people are like, uh, where are they at? Can I, can I go meet them? You know, faces, stars in the NFL that have really developed into faces um, of the league and that are also great representatives at Florida state. And then on the flip side, I think this is a good opportunity for Florida state's coaching staff. You know, I'm not sure how long it's been since some of these guys have been back to Tallahassee and obviously Mike Norvell didn't coach um, a lot of these guys still pretty early in his tenure at Florida State. So it's a good opportunity to build these relationships, um, you know, keep Florida State on the map, keep these keep the coaches and the former players kind of connected um, with one another, because I think those relationships can only help Florida State on and off the field. And at the same time, you know, there's going to be a ton of talent here as well from the 2024 class and on a bunch of guys in 2024 and 2025 that are top targets or top recruits around the country are going to be in Tallahassee. I mean, this list is absolutely stacked. I don't know how we're going to, I don't know how we're going to do it, but maybe (laughs) from from Friday to Saturday, I mean, it's looking pretty crazy at the moment. Obviously, obviously Luke will be there. We're going to see if Camden, is going to make it. It sounds like Cam Davis is going to be there. And then, I mean, outside of that, you've got a bunch of four-star and five-star prospects across multiple classes. I don't even know where to start when I'm looking at some of these lists, like who to just start naming off. But, you know, some top targets like Jonathan Daniels, four-star offensive tackle, uh, another four-star offensive lineman, Jason Zandamella. You've got four-star wide receiver B.J. Gibson, who is someone that Florida State likes a lot. He was here in January – um, one of the top defensive linemen in the country, Camarion Franklin out of Mississippi, expected to be here. Some linebackers are going to be in Tallahassee. Qua Birdsong, a guy we expect to get an offer on Saturday during his trip. And then, I mean, same thing. Florida State's defensive backboard has really exploded this spring. You're going to see a lot of guys from there. Five-star DB in the 2025 class, DJ Pickett. You've got four-star Traveris Banks, who he's liking Florida State a lot as of late. So, I mean, man, the list just kind of goes on right now. Probably probably at least 60 guys going to be here over Friday and Saturday. Some of them will only be here on Friday. Some will only be on Saturday. Some will be here both days. It's just going to gonna kind of depend. But, I mean, man, this is a huge opportunity for Florida State on multiple fronts. I was about to say, not only this weekend, dude, there was a lot of people at practice today. I mean, yeah. it felt – like, I don't know. I mean, I guess there was quite a bit of people last year around this time that were visiting, but you also had to a lot of the local schools and coaches here that got invited to practice, but just to have a lot of attention. I mean, Florida State's earned it, but on the recruiting side, to get prepared for something like this this upcoming weekend and be able to bring some of these big FSU stars that are making a lot of money. Let's be honest, you're making a lot of money in the league, making a lot of money. You're looking at uh, you can you can argue the best the best safety in all of college or college and all of football <laughs> I should yeah and all of yeah Derwin James is coming back by the way for another year <laughs> uh, no but in all of football safety and then all of football for the cornerback position with Jalen Ramsey I mean and I do I believe you know out of that realm but going into some other players that are supposedly you know I know I've been told you know Florida State trying to get Dalvin Cook here. I mean, trying to work on that and figure out that schedule arrangement. But then also, I believe Cam Akers, uh, you know, has been brought up about a a name that could be arriving. It's cool to see a lot of some former Knowles that weren't here during Minor Bell's time and tenure. And then also some guys like Cam Akers and Jermaine Johnson. You know, I'm not going to be shocked at all not if we don't see Jermaine Johnson out there, too, during this weekend. Um, it's, It's really unique to see and I think it'd be huge for some of these former Noles like a Jameis Winston like a Jalen Ramsey Derwin James that don't might have not have spent much time with Mike Ravel I feel like their kind of mentality where they came from earlier in their careers at Florida State fits very well with the head coach that's now in Tallahassee agree with you there yeah it's going to be 
a huge weekend for Florida State. Starting off on Friday, we, I think you can expect a lot of these recruits that are going to be in on Friday to be there early enough to attend Florida State's practice, probably catch some of the former players out there as well. I believe there's a baseball game on Friday night where probably be some activities taking place as well. And then Saturday, obviously going to be the big day for Florida State, the the legacy recruiting weekend. And we'll see how it shakes out in Tallahassee. Me and Tommy will be out there all weekend. Logan will not as normal. So should be a good one. At least this time I have a valid excuse. I've got to go to a wedding. So, yeah. so your wedding? Excuse. Is it your wedding? Not an excuse then. Wow. Well. Here's be like, hey, sorry, I got to work. I'll send you a nice little wedding gift. I've used that way too many times. <laughs> My weekends are all gone throughout the year. At least this one, now I can't use the excuse. <laughs> I can't use it for recruiting. Now, if you had practices going on this weekend, then maybe a little bit different. But no, Maybe there's a secret practice. Maybe on. so. Maybe so. A little too late, though. I got my wedding fit ready to go. So, um, But, yeah, I'm looking forward to that coverage. Make sure you're following our recruiting account. Uh, on Twitter and also following Dustin and Tommy on Twitter. They're easy to search on there. But uh, if you want to follow our recruiting Twitter, that's easy. It's at Noel Recruiting. So make sure you guys are following that. And as usual, our at Noel Gandy account and Dustin and them will do a phenomenal job this weekend of giving you some great coverage of what's going to be a wild weekend. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Um. I mean, I would just say basketball is now over, and clearly it's been something very Definitely. painful for Austin Beasy, who I believe finished the season with like a one and seven, one and eight record or something whenever he went to Florida State games. And, you know, we're really missing him tonight to uh, talk about Florida State kind basketball. of fumbling yeah. away another one um, yesterday in the ACC tournament, leading by, I believe it was five. And, the final two minutes against Georgia Tech and then never scored again as Georgia Tech was able to pull out that uh, two-point victory there. Yeah, Miss Carol on Facebook well, asking, where's Austin? He's he, Austin is in his crying corner. He's in his crying corner. Tough uh, night. Tough night for Austin. I will say, no, for a guy, and I give it to him because it would be the hardest for me to do this but because it was the same way for us a couple years ago covering Florida State football. But he has a lot more games and a lot more previews that he has to write, and he always does a really good job going in depth for both Florida State's team and the opponent's team. He keeps up to date in ACC recruiting everything. So, uh, and it's mainly him solo dolo on that basketball side of coverage for us at nolgameday.com. So, always appreciate him. He's more than just a you know colleague than anything. He's he's one of our closest friends. So, appreciate Austin for killing it with our coverage this season, even with the season being pretty shitty Uh, i always appreciate austin for going in there and taking one for the team and also making sure florida state basketball loses every time that he goes and attends so can't yeah you you can't make it up the guy he really wants florida state to be successful but he won't (laughs) stop going to games Stop, stop doing it austin i know we want to get you to credential and everything but you might need to take one for the team this time and not go to any games. And I definitely really don't want him to be near football. He helped himself with the LSU game in New Orleans. If that, if, if Florida State would have lost that game near the end there and everything, I would never, ever credential him for anything on the football side. Ever. Would have tossed him off the press box. It was, it was high enough, dude. Shoot, don't even get me started about high word now. Uh-uh. But uh, I think that's going to wrap up everything. Yeah. I was just going to say Florida State basketball finishes with a 9-23 and 23 record. FSU football, more wins, 10 wins. National championship season coming (laughs) after that. Yeah, but that's going to wrap up everything for us this week. Next week, I will will give you guys a heads up right now. We will not have a show at spring break, so won't be missing anything uh, on that front. Maybe we'll do a a recruiting recap or something, but Dustin will have that on nolgameday.com more than anything. But we will it's spring break next week and there's no practice going on or anything. So a little break there and I'll also be moving this time next week on a Wednesday. So won't have any kind of technology and stuff set up whatsoever once we get there. So um just keeping head just a heads up on that. And you never know. Make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, even YouTube also because whenever we do these little pop-up shows, I think we're going to do quite a bit more of them because we 
can now I can bring these mics with us after practices or after recruiting, wherever we might do more of those. So make sure I know there's a lot of viewers on here and y'all are commenting a lot on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, but make sure to, to subscribe on your podcast platform, whichever you use, because we, we want to give as much content to you guys as possible this year. We've got a fun season ahead and also recruiting wise basketball, balls over so make sure you're subscribed uh, so you don't miss anything but yeah that's gonna end it off the next time i'll be seeing you guys will be down i'll be down in saint pete i i don't know if i've really shared that this much on here but i'm be i'll be a lot more hands-on with our buck site going into this 2023 year dustin and our new hire of tommy my mir i need to say mir it's not meyer but tommy mir Wait, really is Yep, yeah, it's Mir. Make sure you get it right. He he told me to tell you that. So it's Tommy Mir. Uh, we'll be teaming up there with Dustin to take care of things here in Tallahassee. I'll still be as about hands on, as much hands on as I can get. But those two guys will do a great job there. The show will continue to go on here, um, but it's time to kind of go down there and build our Buck site, which had a phenomenal start last year, and I think there's a lot to do. We got to continue to do to build that brand. There's a lot more work to be done and I'm going to go down there and be a little bit more hands-on and we got the NFL draft coming up soon. So making that move next week, but nothing changes here on FSU coverage for noelgameday.com and definitely not going to write anyway. So yeah, I don't do a lot of writing anyways, so I won't be changing a lot, but appreciate you guys. Uh, Enjoy the break. I know we will, but I am going to be a little bit jealous of you guys coming back and hitting the practice fields but i know tommy and dustin will do a great job covering it for us so appreciate everybody listening y'all have a great week and we'll talk to you guys in two weeks peace